Okay, in this clip, what we're going to look at is the things we've covered in probability. First one we talked about was the probability of an event of occurring, which is the number of times an event occurs divided by the total number of events. We're going to look at the contents of a pack of cards, because still some people are a bit confused about that one. Then we're going to have a look at tree grinds to de determine the probability of an event, the sample set, all the possible events, for example, tossing a head, a coin three times. We're then going to look at a complementary event, so we're looking at a, a possibility of rolling a six or not rolling a six, so the two of them have to add up to give one. Relative frequencies of events and theoretical frequencies. So first of all, let's have a look at this one. Probability of event occurring. What is the probability of the event occurring here? So the probability of getting heads is one. It's one out of two. So the probability of the event is one on two when the event is a head. The probability of getting a tail is also one on two. Let's have a look at this one. This is a bit different. What's the probability of a, and the event is red? The probability of getting a red is 2 out of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, which simplifies to 1 out of 3. The probability of getting a red or a blue. So we can get a red. So there's two reds plus two blues out of a total of 6. So it's equal to 4 on 6, which is equal to 2 on 3. So we'd say the probability of getting a red or a blue is 2 on 3. What's our next one? Packet of cards. Okay, this is a standard pack of cards. We've got 52 cards. 52 cards all up. Okay, this doesn't include the two jokers. The two jokers are, are used in some games, but these are not included in your standard pack of cards. So they are not included in your 52. Here we have three, four suits. The first one is called clubs, and they're black, hearts, and they're red. Oh, these are, called, these are spades, and they're black, and these are diamonds. And you'll see we've got 13 cards in each. So we've got four suits times 13 cards. These ones here are called the picture cards. And you can see we've got a jack, queen, and the king. The ace is not included as a picture card because he doesn't have a picture. Okay? So in all up in the picture cards, we have got 12 picture cards. That's four times. Three. Quite often they'll ask about picture cards, how many picture cards are there. Now, let's have a look at the red. So what is the probability of getting a red? All up, we've got 52 cards. Now, there's 13 cards here that are red and 13 cards here that are red. So in all up, we've got 26 out of 52. It's all that equals 1 out of 2. Okay, so it's a 1 in 2 chance of getting a red card if we pick one randomly. Jacks, how many jacks have we got? Well, jacks, we've got four. So it's four in 52. Now we need to see what that one is. Four into 52 goes 13, so it's one on 13. Okay, so you've got a one in 13 chance of getting a jack if you pick one card randomly. What about hearts? Well, the hearts, there's 13 hearts. So it's 13 out of 52. Well, if we go 13 into 52 goes 4, so it's 1 in 4. Now let's have a look at this. A red 5, so where's a red 5? This, this what's probably getting this card or getting, so, sorry, a red heart. So it's going to be this one or it can be this one. And a black 10 can be... Sorry, this one. Black tens this one or this one. All up, there are four cards that we can possibly get out of 52. Again, that's going to be equal to 1 in 13. Okay, so here we can see the probability of the event was equal to the event. Number of events by the total events. 
So the event in this case was getting a red. Okay, so we got 26 reds. Total number of cards, 52. Let's go into a little bit further. Now let's look at the probability trees. Here I'm looking at the probability of tossing a coin three times. So the first time I toss the coin, I get a head. So the first one, I get a head. Then I toss this coin again, my chance of getting a head or getting a tail. If I've tossed a head in the first one and I've tossed a head in the second one, once I've tossed this one again, I've still got the chance of a head or a tail. And so on. If I get a head first, then I get a tail, then I get a head and tail. You can see right along these tree branches, head, head, head. So my possible outcomes are head, head, head. This one's head, head, tail, head, head, tail, tail, head, ta head, tail, head, and goes across here and so forth. So there's eight all up. So let's have a look. What is the possibility of getting heads, head, head? So let's have a look at all the outcomes. There's only one head, head, head. That's one out of a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Notice that I actually had to draw the table out to actually determine this. Now what's the probability of getting two heads? Okay. Well we could say it's this one. We could well actually we could say it's this one, because there's two. There's also three. We can say it's this one. We can say it's this one. And this has got one head, one head, one head. So the probability of getting two heads is four out of eight. One one in two. Well, what's the probability of getting no heads? The probability of getting no heads, what have we got? If we get no heads, then we've got this one. So the probability of getting no heads, prob probability of no heads is 1 on 8. All we had to do was to draw out the table so we can figure it out. Let's have a look at another one here. We have got, we've got two marbles, two picks. I've got some red marbles, a red, a white and a brown. So the first one, I picked the first one. First one's a red. Then the choice I've got is a red, a white and a brown. If I pick, if the next one I pick is, so that's that. So here I can get a red, red and a red, white and a red, brown. Here I can get a white, red, a white, white, a white, brown or a brown, red, a brown, white and a brown, brown. Let's have a look. So what is the probability of getting a red and a white in any order? Let's look at all our outcomes. So how many have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine outcomes. Okay, so what's the probability of getting a red and a white in any order? So here's a red, here's a red and a white in any order. So I can also get a white and a red, can't I? Brown. This has got brown, so it's got it's irrelevant. Okay, so in any order, it's two out of nine. But here, I want a red and a white in order. Notice they've said in order here. You need to read these questions for probability. I want a red and then a white, so it's only one. So it's one in nine. So that's probability trees for you. You need to actually start at the beginning. The first pick, I could get the red, I could get the white and get the brown. Then with the red, I can get the red, white and brown. Again, whatever the choices are. This one, I, I had not, for my first roll, I can get a head or I can get a tail. Once I've a, rolled a head for the first one, I then can say, okay, what can I get next? I can get a head or I can get a tail for the next one. If I get the head first, what do I get? Do I get the head or I get the tail? Then we go along the branches to get all the list of possible outcomes. Now it's really important that you write them all out so that you can figure out what your next option is. Okay. Now let's look at complementary events. If my event is rolling a head, right? Probability of rolling a head is one in two. The probability of rolling a tail is also one in two. They add up to one, total of one. So the, the probability of rolling, so the probability of rolling a head, if I don't roll a head, I'm going to roll a tail. So this is rolling a head and this is a rolling a tail. The probability of rolling a six and a standard dice is one out of six. The probability of not this line here, this little bill here is not. This is complementary event. So the complementary event, let's just put that down so we know. The complementary event 
of not rolling the six is everything else. One, two, three, four, five, which is five out of six. So there we can see that the probability of event, which is one in six, by the probability of not rolling the six, is one. So the probability of the event plus the probability of not rolling the event is one. Okay, I hope you're not too confused with that one, but yeah, either I'm going to roll the six or I'm not going to roll the six. Either I'm going to get the head or I'm not going to get the head. Now let's look at relative frequency. Relatively frequency event is the frequency of the event divided by total frequency. So in this experiment, we spun this dice and we can see most times we've actually got the, the black. Okay, so 54, so for the red was 54 out of 200. For the blue was 63 out of 200. And for the black was 83 out of 200. You can see definitely a lot more blacks than we got the blues. So this is the highest probability. So what's the relative frequency or probability of getting a black? We can say it's 83 out of 200. Okay, so the number of events, which was the 83 out of the total frequency, which is 200. Okay. The relative frequency of the blue. Well, the relative frequency, we've just done it here. This is 63 blues out of 200. Now, it says predict. Predict the number of reds if we spin it 600 times. Now, here we've only spun it 200 times. The, the, freak, the relative frequency of red is 54. 54 out of 200. Now, we want to know what happens if we spun it 600 times. So we say, so this is the, the, the percent, this is the relative frequency we get out of 600. If we multiply those, we're going to get 162 times. So we expect, based on this experiment here, that if we spin this 600 times, we'll get 162 times the reds. Make sense? Next one, let's have a look at the last page. Okay, theoretical frequency, uh, probability. Theoretical frequency, theoretical probability. Okay, in experiment, I got five heads when I tossed a coin six times. Now my question, is there something wrong with the coin? No, there's not, because the probability of getting a heads theoretically is one in two. But that doesn't always happen. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So the probability of getting a heads is one at a time. In my case, what was the experimental probability? Mine, I got 5 out of 6 in my particular example. This maybe was because the, the, the coin was loaded. Okay, Sometimes the one side's a little bit heavier. I don't know that. I'm just making it up. But again, if for my particular case, the experimental probability, experimental frequency was 5 on 6. Now let's have a look at another example. A bag contains 5 red four yellow and two blues. If the marbles is drawn randomly from the bag, find the probability that it will be a red. Well, how many have we got? We've got five plus four plus two. It gives us a total of 11 marbles. So the probability that it is red is five. Probability that's red is equal to five divided by 11. The probability of a yellow is 4 divided by 11. Probability is not blue. So the probability if it's not blue is anything else. So we're going to probability if it's not blue, then it can be a red or it can be a yellow. So that would be the probability that it's a 5 on 11 plus a 4 on 11, which is equal to 9 on 11. Okay? So like the last question, is the probability, is the theoretical or the experimental probability that we're talking about? So which one are we talking about here? It's actually going to be the theoretical probability because when we're actually drawing it's random. So this is the rule, but it doesn't necessarily happen like here. When I had my experiment and I tossed my coin, it didn't necessarily come up one in two times, it actually came up five times. So in these cases, when we're talking about things like that, we're talking about the theoretical probability. They're not going to say theoretical probability, but it is. 
Okay, that's the end of this um, tutorial. So hopefully you've got some information from it. Go back and review, review your notes.